on everybody it's red monkey trucking here sitting here with my buddy greg pete what's up eric um i want to say hi to everybody out there uh, i want to throw out some names today that's kind of what i wanted to do with one of my videos because a lot of people out here have been supportive of me um you know i'm up to about i think 380 over on 350 users now man so i just want to give a shout out to a lot of people that like uh truck and review channel great channel to check out uh michael semi-truck driver very informative channel to check out he does good videos on trucking he's got 20 years experience. hey michael uh i want to give a shout out to the crafty trucker especially because um they have helped me with a lot of information about cameras and, and editing and stuff like that and anytime i've had a question They've always been helpful to me to help me out and give me some guidance. And matter of fact, this camera right here was the uh, suggestion that he gave me, or they gave me to, uh, you know, uh, get that would be affordable and still be worth what I paid for. And for what I paid for, I got a really good deal. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Trucker B, my brother, my homeboy, doing great videos out there. Go check his channel out. Um, yeah, there's a lot of other people that I could name. I just it'd take me forever to sit here and go through that. But I want to do. I want to thank everybody out there for your support and everything, and being patient with me the last couple of weeks, the last three weeks. I've been kind of slow on putting videos out. Um, just been in a a funk, I guess you could say. I've been doing good. Oh yeah, Truckers Coach TV, definitely big shout out. What's up, Jason? He's been there to personally help me out and talk to me and make sure that I'm doing all right. And um, the Spectre. Big shout out to you. As soon as we meet up, he's a, uh, he's, I can't believe he's giving me that guitar, dude. <laughs> yeah, I still can't believe that. He's a good dude. Um, you know, uh, Jay Cannell, he's watched a few of my videos. Shout out to him, you know. Hope you're doing better with that arm. I hear you getting back into trucking, working with Spectre, and that's cool. Um, so, pretty much, there's so many people I could call out. Uh, Wondering Nomad, give him a big shout out. Um, good videos over there. Go check him out. Him and his wife. Uh, so, now, anybody else that I haven't named, I appreciate you. Don't feel I, left out. Don't feel left out. You're just I, not I'll good enough to, to remember you. Also, <laughs> sorry. I'll get to your name eventually. <laughs> it does look like about a $3,000 camera set. I mean, I'm telling you. I mean, this thing, it, dude, it, this it, is what it, this thing comes with. I mean, it looks like over three thousand dollars worth of crap i mean i know you can get at least 50 bucks out of pawn shop out of it <laughs> right I mean, at least remember I back I in the days we were talking about what to do on this video what to what to do and we're like oh let's do like a two-year anniversary because eric and i we've been driving now for two years now and uh matter of fact i think about this very day uh, i think about the 21st in october the 21st is when we, uh yeah. yesterday was 21st. yeah it was the 21st and that was our oh, graduation shit. day Shit, yeah. I've had my CDL for two years. Two years now. We graduated on the 21st. So of October. It's been mm. two years. Yes, it has. And um, I guess this could be like a two-year review of yeah. what it's like. Like what, what our, our life is like now, two years. So like if you're thinking about maybe getting into trucking and you're like in a crappy job working at a factory like we did, <laughs> doing construction like I did. Oh, let me tell you what, man. Well, I've been there too. Yeah. First of Breaking all, you're going to gain some fucking weight. Let me tell you that much because you, you yeah. do. You got to start working out and start going for walks. But you don't got to worry about not having any money in your pocket. Yeah. You better listen to what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> so... <clears throat> No, man. Yeah, my uh, my life has changed drastically in the last few years. Um, yeah, I started, a, I was already on a path to doing better things before I got into trucking. But like he said, I was working in a factory making Gore-Tex jackets for the military, busting my balls, man, like busting my butt as hard as I could running around I was a material handler yep. so I got all the material after one piece was done with a certain station and put it on a cart and moved it to the next and have to move it and stack it up for them and make sure everything's ready to go and I had to keep up with everybody and it was just it was 
You got some and I only, got, I only made, mind you, I made like three hundred dollars a week. Oh yeah, ten, twelve bucks an hour if you're lucky, and you got some oh, twenty. Shit. I was making like eight bucks an hour. Yeah, and you shit. got like some twenty-year-old kid with a clipboard saying, "Man, you just took twelve minutes to go pee." I'm like, "Well, shit, you gonna hold my fifty <laughs> next time or what?" Yeah, but right. Like you took are. too long. You yeah, took too long. They, they'll time your bathroom breaks yeah. in some of these places. Denzo is big for that. They did that with my wife, man. It yeah. was that was cold. Man. And having now, we've got man complete freedom now. I mean, you could pretty much. I mean, I'm a you. But I could, as long as I get there on time, I pick up on time, I deliver on time. When I leave, how I leave, how long I go, it don't matter. I got complete freedom to do what I want. Yeah, um, you know, I work the company I work for. Everybody knows on here who I work for. You know, and no bashing at all. I've never, never put them down. A lot of people have. Matter of fact, just a few minutes ago, we ran into a guy in Bojangles because we went to go eat, and. Uh, he used to work at PTL and he was talking about, you know, some of the issues they had back then. And I told him, I was like, man, they've came a long way and they pay more than they used to. They got brand new trucks now. They ordered, just ordered more trucks. They order them every year. Two sets of trucks, Freightliners and uh, Internationals. Every single year. So everybody can have he a new truck. He used to come from the Harley place too, wouldn't he? Because there's a Harley dealer right across the street and he had a Harley shirt on. I, I think he was coming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you're interested, like, what can you do after driving a truck for two years? Well, that dude was just walking out of the Hardy dealership. That's like, I yeah. think, twenty thousand dollars starting price on Harley. So yeah. that's the uh, that's the kind of life you can have, man. I mean, you can make really good money. Now. I, I really want to express like the change in my life. Like, you know, I haven't. I've spoke lightly about it on here before. What I came from and how much my life has changed. The big thing that really irks me sometimes is seeing people on here complaining about making fifteen hundred dollars a week, that or even a thousand dollars a week. Or even a thousand dollars a week. Man, my check was only a thousand dollars a week. How am I gonna live? Right. Dude, I like, didn't make a thousand dollars a month before I started driving a truck. Exactly, I mean, man. It's just I want I just want people to look, put things in perspective sometimes, because they might have not been where some people like. For example, like us, where we've been yeah. before, what we came from, a thousand dollars a week. Me and my wife make that much and more on a on just on a bad week. Like I wouldn't say, call it a bad week, just a yeah. slower week. We're still making almost a grand a piece on a good week, up to fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars a week because we get paid extra after four thousand miles and all this stuff. We get extra pays. We make the damn dang good money, man. Oh, yeah, and. Middle when upper middle people, class life now. You know, yeah. we're like middle class people now. When I see people complaining about making fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars a week, I'm like, I mean, where did you come from? Why right? didn't you just stay where you're at if you were making that good of money? I'm telling you. Like, you know, or you know, the industry I know slowed down and stuff, but you know, coaches talked about this a lot about last year was a just a uh, a wild goose because like it just came out of nowhere that yeah. the industry that shot DLD up. scare was like, kind of like making everybody freaked out they were over booking freight they were stocking in warehouses yeah. and stuff like and, that and, they and were the afraid. freight prices all, everything just shot up yeah and the smart people in the industry they realized uh, this is not normal yeah. and then they they a lot of people I think either knew or, or bought a truck and came in and say oh man it's gonna be great I'm oh, gonna... and we're doing these like twelve hundred dollar a week leases I mean have you heard so many people they're leasing oh, a truck and their yeah. their payments are like eleven twelve hundred dollars a week man I mean what were you thinking exactly I mean the thing is a lot of people just expected the, the industry to stay that way and mind you you don't don't take me for what I say about the industry because I'm learning. I'm not really interested in this point in my life about being an owner op or anything, but I pay attention to what's going on. I don't get out there and talk about much about this trucking stuff and all the money being made because I'm sitting back and listening and learning. Because later on down the road, when I decide, if I decide to do something like that, I'm going to have all the knowledge there ready to use it. Yeah, but any and, common person can take and see, look, for 10 years, freight's average between 225 250 a mile, and then for one year, it goes to 3 $4 a mile. So clearly, don't take a genius to realize that it's probably not going to last that long. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I know. I mean, it's I just mean, like, like Co Trucker's Coach said, man, we had this big climb, and then it crashed. People freaked out. All it's doing, it's going to fix itself. Yeah. That's what markets do. It's going to fix itself. And especially a market that's never going anywhere. You know, I'm not going to speak on the whole people freaking out about automated stuff, you know. And it, it is an issue. Don't get me wrong. But it's not, it, it's an issue that we need to watch out for our 
fellow our, our, our next generation yeah, maybe of drivers. Our kids driving, our kids you know, driving they're, or our grandkids they may driving. not have this on a 20 year career, 25 year career, exactly. but I think over the next 10 to 15 years, and easily 10 years, I mean, yeah, we're going to see them. Amazon's going to have them, you know, uh, FedEx maybe, EPS. They're going to have that kind of stuff, but you know, you cannot go down to a uh, Bush Bean Company and bring in a computer and they're not going to open your doors for you. They're going to tell you to get lost. You know, I mean, yeah. so that's not going to be able to happen over the entire industry, I don't think. You know, but. there's, it's like this. I, my problem is, look, is, is people, is going back to the whole complaining thing. You know, people are like, oh, you work there? I'm like, yeah, and, and I get paid good because to me, I don't live, I live by my means and I live below my means <laughs> like yeah. i don't have a house because i had an apartment and everything but once my wife came on the road with me to drive to like what that was a pointless to keep our apartment like yeah. keep electricity all that until we get into a place where we get where we know we're going to be home and get maybe a more home time and stuff like that right now we're working to save money and we're saving money like that's a smart thing to do that, i mean that's what we're doing and, and further down the road We'll have the money to go buy a piece of property, buy a, a, a double wide or build a house or something like that, whatever we decide to do. You know, it's just, it really like, to see a lot of people out here, They, I just want people to appreciate the things they got. Remember where because, you came from. Remember where you came you know? from. Don't forget that some of us have been uh, in very bad places. You know, yeah. and going back to, you know, we've both been driving exactly the same amount of time. Yeah. We went to school together. And literally from like day one, like we started talking outside of our classroom, smoking cigarettes during break. Yeah. You just smoking Chilling a cigar. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm a big on these little cigar things, man. But like, like we instantly we had this group of friends. All military people. All military too, guys. Everybody kind of like was all formed, in military service. We formed our own little group and we stayed in that group and we sat and we helped each other until like you were yeah. tired of backing the truck Doing the pre trip up. post trip so they let you stay two hours late man we were there for until they were telling us yeah. get out of the truck you're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we matter of fact the post trip and pre trip I studied so daggum hard with these guys that the night before the test, I sat there laying in the bed with my old lady repeating the whole thing without a piece of paper <laughs> at all. I said, here, take this paper and tell me what I missed. I went over the whole post-trip, pre-trip from front to back, memorized. And but everybody in our clique passed first time though. Yeah. If you do want to get the industry and you get like six months a year experience and you want to really make money and you're by yourself, and become a trainer because they are desperate for trainers. Everybody that I know yeah, of. Yeah, I can say that, that I uh, will. Uh, I'm gonna have to disagree with six months on that because uh, I believe that any trainer should have at least a year. Well, I think that you any have trainer a good year, should but... have at least one winter experience and the year to learn how to actually have a good backing skill with different types of situations driving through different types of city situations learning how to correct if you miss a turn and you had to find your way out I mean I did my do. training we did a Walmart contract when I, I was like into my training on my second day they said hey they're gonna do this Walmart thing now do you all want to do it and we were doing like three four deliveries a day where you know you had a back a sheet it was like a half page long of how many backings you did during like your three or four week training session I had the full page another page and then half of the second page completely filled out with how many places I backed in because how crazy it was but it was a great training experience yeah I think that it's just my opinion I think that anybody that's going to train should have at least a year they should have at least one winner and, and one good year of backing skill that way because I mean it takes you a good year to get out there and get a feel for shit because oh man everything is different I honestly like, thought two years honestly I mean until just about now I finally realized that you know what there's not a place you know you should get like intimidated you go to like maybe a major city or a big city or yeah. maybe even the the uh, adverse of that you're going to a really small place like a little one light stop sign town and you'd get it going like intimidated like man you know I'm getting anxious this place is going to be kind of crazy I'm all, I can right, get into it right. all right and now I'm like I don't care man I'll find yeah. it yeah <laughs> after that that's what I'm saying after that first year you lose that intimidation feeling Damn. like of getting like super nervous because being nervous out here is is a bad thing yeah it can distract you from your job and this is a life-threatening job in certain situations on the interstate I mean you got other cars that you will literally crush if you get in an accident kill people yeah. so you have to be very aware and I think when you're nervous 
and this is what I've tried to explain to Laura a lot, is like you, you just gotta try to calm down because that nervousness can over get and put a blanket in front of your eyes when it comes to what you need to focus yeah. on. And you need to focus and, on what's going around your truck all around it all the time. Yeah, constantly. And you know, she's gotten a lot better. Like she was she's a really good driver on the interstate. She's very attentive. She's actually I would I would call her more focused than I am when it comes to driving down the road and stuff. When it comes to back end, she gets a little nervous, but she's gotten a lot better at it because what what happened was there for a while I was just not letting her do it as much as she should. I was I was kind of like feeding the baby with a spoon. Maybe being impatient. You know, I had to take that damn yeah. spoon. I had to take the spoon away from her because she was not progressing anymore like she had got to a certain point where she but she wasn't progressing anymore where she would come to a situation like in one of my previous videos about uh, the hardest backing spot ever I think that's what it's called uh, the hardest docking or something like that ever like yeah. that, that I happen. wouldn't expected her to do that even at this point she she's coming up on her year but I would never expected her to even try that because she's not got the experience in tight spots like that yet she's got good backing experience at shippers and receivers where you gotta you know like p and g walmart all those dropping hooks and stuff i mean she can go right in and out so that's what maybe coming and to doing like a solo driver maybe that would benefit i think a little bit because like on me it, it's me man i mean i team drove oh, yeah. for I mean, like that's why three I got, four that's, months that's why i got and, i was better at it i'm yeah. better faster than she's got because i didn't have anybody it, it there. was just you man you're it, in the truck you, know, you got to figure out how now, to make it work mind you she was with me as a passenger and there were situations where uh she got out and she helped me just spot for me because i mean she had to learn anyway i never had that you know and <laughs> most of the time i didn't you there was a couple of situations where she had to spot for me and it was only because i didn't want to hit somebody else's truck you know what i mean now i could get out and, and look myself and everything but that only you can't get out and look while you're backing up you know no. you can see what you're doing but you have to get used to how your trailer's moving so you have confidence that when you move it that way you're not going to hit a truck or you, you know? get that guy that goes to back up and he backs up like two foot then he gets out goes looks around the truck then he goes back up for another two foot gets out goes around the truck and you're <laughs> like three days. yeah i mean three yeah. days later and then yeah. of course you're the one who has to leave as soon as he yeah. gets out yeah i mean it happens man and, and look when i see somebody doing that that's some situations that's that people here on YouTube have talked about. Yeah, I have. Is I cannot stand somebody sitting there, seeing somebody in trouble, laughing, and just going. Count them on the radio, maybe. Yeah, taking videos of them. Like, come on, man. Dude. Like everybody's, all these older truckers are complaining about these drivers not being good drivers. But yeah. the, a lot of them will sit there in their truck and shoot video instead of getting out and trying to yep. help them. Now, if you want this when to be, they were nude, wouldn't they want the? Would they want to be the guy no, that were, got they were, out? They were super truckers. Oh they yeah, from the beginning, way. right? They yeah, were they back. They backed the truck. Born with the CB out the vagina. They, yeah, they backed the truck out right out of their mama's yeah. vagina. That so. wasn't a curse word. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. But would uh, you rather be the guy that's going to be out there and help that driver that season? Because now two years, you know, we're seasoned, experienced drivers now. You know, hey dude, help the kid out. And some people say, oh, I don't want to be liable if he hits nothing. Well, dude, you're not in the driver's seat. No. You're not going to be liable for it if he if he doesn't turn the wheel or doesn't stop when you say stop. It's not your fault, but dude, help him out, man. Yeah. People helped you out, I'm sure, at some point. If he's in time. behind the wheel, no matter what, it's his fault. Like, yeah. I mean, you're not going to be liable. But the thing is, you know, it's just a lot of. If you want to make the industry better, some of these older people talking about these, oh, these new drivers don't know how to drive their steering wheel holders and all that. If you want to make the industry better, help make it better. When, help exactly. When you see somebody out there needing help, get out there and help them. Talk to them. Share some experience oh, with yeah. them. Oh yeah. You know, I got two years of experience. I don't know hardly anything yet. Yeah. You know, I got. I do know how to back pretty good. I know a lot of things about m managing traffic and working Dude, through cities. But cool. I tell you what, if I see somebody that's only got a year and a half and he needs help with some. If I have any kind of knowledge that's going to go from me to him that might help him out in his career, I'm going to share it with him. Do you remember the trick that Jason told us a couple of weeks ago on YouTube? I don't know if you were on the video or not, but then I tried it too because I do a lot of blindside back. We do nothing but live load, live offload. And I was doing a blindside backing and Jason's like, you know, if you take your mirror and use the button and push it all the way out, and mm -hmm. you could actually follow the back of your trailer all the way in yeah. and you never lose sight of the back of your trailer yeah, just by using that. your mirror. I've been doing that since I started. Like Dude, somebody told I me never that. even and thought somebody about Somebody told me that. I didn't even think it, it yeah. wasn't a thing that like, you it know, just I probably clicked. would have. I probably would have figured it out eventually, like yeah. he did. But the thing is, somebody told me it's like if you're blindside backing, roll that mirror out, and yeah. you can roll the mirror out to you. You can keep an eye on your trailer the yeah. whole time. 
you know, I still, Never at any time, I think it's a good advice to avoid blindside backing it, at all costs, unless you have to. And there's situations where you're going to have to. A lot of one-way roads, man. What are you trying to think about? It? I just want to know how many people out there have actually would actually get out and help somebody else because I I see more people pointing and laughing and shooting video than I ever do see anybody get out of their truck and help somebody. Yep. There could be 20 yeah. people at the dock watching this one kid struggling for 30 minutes sometimes trying to get that truck in the dock and every one of them other 19 trucks are just sitting in there. And oh, I mean, yeah. dude, it was raining. I, I put it on Facebook and I was like, I had a lot of people blast me about it saying that, oh man, I don't want to be liable if the kid hits anything. I'm like, dude, it was raining, it was cold, it was in Chicago. I did my raincoat on, went out there and I backed the kid in because he tried six times, turned around, rolled around, reset up again, and then kept on doing it. And then finally you went in. Well, there's one thing I gotta ask you, or I wanna put out there. This guy right here, whatever his name is, uh, no, he's he's really interested in helping people with credit, and he's working on getting some things going with that and everything. So, you guys give him a shout out. His name's Greg Pete. He doesn't have a YouTube channel yet, but you can go down in the comments below and say, "What's up, Greg?" And so, I'll hit you up. And uh, he's got some good information about credit, and it doesn't involve like paying money unless yeah, like you want you unless help. you want somebody to do it for you. Yeah. But like if physically you just want, help your credit. Yeah, if you want the information that can help you with your credit and get some things off your credit and how to set up some things to pay yeah. your bills and get it taken care of, this this guy right here. I use here. what is called factual disputing. We'll take and look at your credit reports and I guarantee you amongst the three major bureaus, you're gonna find someone between TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Someone's gonna have a date that ends wrong, like TransUnion always uses the 30th of every month, whereas Experian and Equifax usually use the first of the month. So right there, that's justification to have something deleted. If you had a credit card for like five years and you made one late payment, man, we can get it fixed. It's a simple letter, you send it to them. I'll show you the form letter, send it to you. You can mail it out yourself and then it don't cost you nothing. Where can they contact you at? Man, email me at gregpete at gmail.com. Greg Pete P I E D T at gmail.com and I will put my link in the description of this video. Okay. Yeah, I'll Hit do me that. Up. Um I appreciate that. So guys, we appreciate, you know, uh, you watching our videos and I, I, I do want to thank everybody that's supported me um, I never even thought this YouTube thing would go anywhere and uh, it's really helped, up. it's really helped me out with my uh, personality like being able to um, sometimes I like I force myself to do a video because I want to be more sociable and I force myself to go and watch people's videos and learn things and you know I'm also taking um, some uh, photography classes on uh, Skillshare. If you haven't checked out Skillshare, this is not a paid promotion, but go to Skillshare.com. Um, it's, it's only nine dollars and ninety-nine cents a month. You can watch up to thirty-five, or excuse me, twenty-five thousand videos on all kinds of different subjects: photography, videography, uh, painting, or any kind of thing you could possibly think of. They got lessons on there. They got whole lesson programs, like several videos, like. The, from it, uh, beginning to intermediate to pros on all kinds of stuff and that's what I'm trying to learn and do and some editing skills and also my video setups and uh, audio and all that and also my photography um, I have plans to start a photography website um, as soon as I get it going I will share with you guys about how to uh, get out there and check it out because um, you know I don't know a lot of you seen some of my earlier videos I had some photography in but I kind of changed my format to do videos more about you know focused on certain subjects and team driving and things like that and this is kind of a off video but you know I ran into my buddy today so I figured we'd do a video and just yeah, talk both a little had bit. to be in Knoxville but I mean, I've always believed that you know this job too trucking it is a great second chance career I don't, I don't care where oh, you yeah, came from what yeah. you've been doing this is a start to do I mean I was gonna go to school to be an RN which is a three-year process yeah. and I make more now than any RN ever does and it took me three weeks of school and another month I mean it it's a sacrifice a month of school with no income another month of training no income two weeks of waiting for the jobs to come through and the get the but once you get that time in man I'm telling you yeah it definitely, class. when I say second chance it's, this is like my eighth chance in life yeah <laughs> you know fourth as far or fourth as, or fifth. as yeah. far as 
changing my life and doing better and being a responsible uh, citizen and, and, and you know being a responsible adult um, this is this career has helped me because there's so many because of the regulations and because of things I have to follow by oh, yeah. it reminds me of being in the military where like I was told what to do every day. Very structured life. Basically. Very structured, and yeah. being in the military, like you I should have stayed. On in, that. Yeah, I yeah. should have stayed in the military, especially yeah. once you've gone through it. It almost institutionalizes you. Oh yeah. Because they tear apart your brain and put it what they they want it. Oh yeah. And they tell you what to do every day, when to wake up, where to be, and all that stuff. And I got used to that. And I don't think when I got out of the military. I just went buck wild. I mean, because I didn't have that structure anymore. No more rules in. And I yeah. was still young, very young at the time. I was a kid, man. I was on my. I got out of the military at 22 years old. I was still a kid. But like when you're, you know, you start pushing 40 years old. You look back. I was still a kid. Then. Oh yeah. I had that kid mindset. But at 22, 30 was old. So you know how that yeah, feels. Yeah. Right. You know? you know. So. Wait till you get your 40 stress. Trucking has definitely gave me that structure and and not forced me because i want to do it but it's when i feel like i feel down like i've had you know a couple weeks feeling that way i still have responsibilities so like yeah. even though i might want to feel like just kind of lay in there all day because i, I want to sulk or something or i want to get into my own head you still got i work. still have to do things yeah, and it, that it, forces, get it kind of forces me okay i got to do this i have no yeah. choice this is my career if i don't do it it's going to have repercussions and I'm, I'm going to either make less money or get yeah. fired from my job or whatever it may be and it's a very regulated industry you know you've yeah. got i mean your random drug test anytime and you get it you get into any kind of accidents you're getting it i mean they could pull you off side of the road do inspection peeing a cop around the side of the road that's oh yeah like, thing, there's man. states now that i mean uh, they're like in michigan they drug test you on the side of the road with a swab right now right there then and there so but you, know, you can this, still have a good life and living it though but it does give you that structure you know i mean you know when yeah, you gotta run you know when you you gotta plan your trips out sometimes yeah. three four days in advance and that you know, you know what's happening that that's uh th that's the benefit to me it really is you yeah. know but all right guys i guess we're going to yeah. end this video we appreciate you and this is fun by the way nice meeting you brother nice meeting you yeah. too <laughs> all right yeah thanks guys for coming in and watching the video um all the links are in the description. I'll put his link to his email in the description. I got a bunch of links in the description for other YouTubers that I watch and like I have a lot of respect for. Um, oh, and one person I forgot to mention, Dread Pirate Trucker. Good dude, great videos, go check him out. He's also in the description down below. So thanks everybody for stopping in and checking out this video. Nice seeing y'all. It is a long one today, but uh, I have faith you guys are going to hang in to the end. If you hang in to the end right here, you're going to hear about the monkey. There is a monkey coming soon, and he's coming to get all of you. Yes, he is. You better watch out.